Hi, and thanks so much for joining me for this Get Ready With Me featuring my February favorites. If you'd like to see that, please keep watching. If you did tune into my favorites, you'll know that I have a lot, so I was only able to put on some of it, but I put on as much as I possibly could at one time. So let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna start with the Chantecai Anti-Pollution Mattifying Cream. And I love this for just perfecting the overall look. So it makes foundation even better. I just apply this to the T-zone area. It just perfects, especially for me, this area right in the front. And it helps with my oily T-zone area that can get oily after a few hours. It shields skin against toxic urban pollution and also it shrinks the appearance of pores for refined looking skin. Okay, we're gonna go in with this product which has made an appearance in favorites before. It's the Le Beige Water Fresh Tint by Chanel. This is in medium, but I had a chance to sample all of the shades. I've had a little bit of sun, not on purpose. I'm under a shade structure with SPF, but even with the reflection off the ground, I still get a little bit of sun. So the next one up is Medium Plus, and this seems like a much better match right now for my skin tone. So I've been liking the fact that it matches a little bit better. I'll do half again. But I just love this for under foundation. I love it for, as you know, fix it. I love it for foundation, a really lightweight. It has a very unique consistency if you haven't tried it yet. So I hope those swatches help because the swatches online are really not clear. I don't think they're clear. So I was happy to be able to show that to you. So this is half, you can see it just blurs and really sets that canvas for a little bit more coverage. So if you have really beautiful skin and you just want a little bit more perfection to it, this is a great one. Otherwise, I do like to use it more as a primer. It hydrates a little bit as well. So my skin's more dehydrated in the winter. So let's go ahead, I'll even out the other side. Again, this is medium plus. It has a bit of a warmer tone than medium as well. So I will be buying the full size of this shade. I think it's a really good match. Medium is great for my winter skin when I'm really not outside very much at all. Now, my forehead, actually that's not bad, but my forehead is typically <laughs> at least one shade deeper. So I thought I'd show you in case you're more of the shade of my forehead, what another shade looks like on. This is the next one up. We're gonna put light deep up here on the forehead, so I'll just Place it so you can kind of see. And that's a good shade if you are the shade of my forehead. <laughs> Actually, that probably would work really well with other foundations in general, just to kind of bring that forehead back. Uh, let's go ahead and use a bronzer now. So we're going to take yet another shade and I do want to invest in a deeper shade as well for bronzer. So there's a couple, we could use medium deep or deep. So I'll show you both in case you were curious. So this is medium deep. So it's like another shade up. It has a little bit more of like a, a warm tone to it though. This reminds me a lot of the shade of the bronzer. Actually, let me go and see side by side what that looks like. So if this bronzer <laughs> is too light for you, this is a great alternative. And I was told to keep an eye out for what may be coming <laughs> later with this in terms of another shade. I just wanna swatch these and see. So here's the bronzer, the cream bronzer, this one. And then this is medium deep in the water fresh tint. <laughs> so they are close, but not exactly the same. This one's a little bit more intense. Light deep is a little bit more pink than the um, bronzer. I don't know why I can't think of it. So medium plus is the one I put all over my face. So this is medium plus. Medium plus, the bronzer, and then, what did I say this was? Light deep? Oh no, I'm confused. And the bronzer, and then this is, oh no, I don't remember. Wait, Um. oh no. Bronzer, medium deep, medium. And then this, bronzer, medium deep, medium plus, and this one is light deep. I think I did that correctly. Yeah, okay, again, <laughs> light deep, the bronzer, medium deep, and then medium plus. <laughs> Let me know if you need me to post that as a still on the community tab or on Instagram. I think I confused myself in the playbook, I'll know. So but let's put deep over here and you can see the difference. This is deep. 
So this is a really pretty bronzer, I think, if you are my shade. You can see how it just, just melds into the skin so it doesn't sit on it. It becomes really one with the skin and I think it's so beautiful. So I'll be ordering deep as well as medium plus. This probably would work well with a brush. I just haven't figured out what brush to use yet. Again, this is not my idea. This is a tip from a Chanel makeup artist. What a great tip though. I'd love this. I think this is like a product I've been really looking for for a long time and not realizing that this would actually do a really great job. So a lightweight bronzer that just melts into the skin. Now that we have that in place, Hopefully it's blended. I can't really see really well in the viewfinder. We're going to go in with my favorite foundation of the month. Actually, this is not a concealer nor a foundation, but it will replace your concealer and your foundation. So it really is a concealer foundation. This is the Merit Beauty Complexion Stick in Suede. And one of you noticed that without any other makeup, it is not completely seamless because my skin tone isn't that peach, but I picked this one intentionally with a peach undertone because it will color correct as well. So that's why I picked this one. So under the eye, I just love the size. They were really thoughtful about the actual size of this because it goes under there really easily. And then, oh, I should do half. And then I'm going to place here because again, color correcting. And I love this brush. So I had a question about this brush. Do you actually need this? And you know how much I love my Shiseido brush. This is amazing, but it doesn't really get under the eye well, and I don't use this. I don't think I've ever tried to use this under the eye. I mean, I did after I thought about it. It doesn't work that well. This, however, works really well right here. It just sweeps under perfectly, and then I can use it on the rest of my face. It gets into these corners here really well. So that's why I like this with the foundation stick, because when I'm using this product, it's really fast, literally minutes to do my makeup. Um, so that's why I like them together. So I don't use the Shiseido brush for this. I don't know, I think because I have this brush, but because I can just go underneath the eyes and the rest of my face without changing brushes. I'm gonna use this as concealer today as well. So when there's like a bronzer color, it just kind of fades into it a little bit better than when I had it with no other makeup on. So I've been playing around with this because I wanted to see what it can do and it does a really great job. Um, I do powder though when I'm using it on camera. I won't powder it in real life because I can just reapply, but this does have that added benefit of addressing dark spots on your face as a skincare kind of benefit, so I really like that idea. Whether it works or not, I don't really know yet. I haven't used it long enough, but I will try it. So yeah, for building up, it really needs to have a peachy tone for me to be built up well, or else the color kind of turns green after I add several layers. Oh, that's why I like this peachier tone as well. This is one I would probably repurchase once it's out because the price point's really good. I think it's 30 something, I can't remember the price point, but it's, I think it's under $40. And for travel, this is a perfect item because just such a quick application. You're not spending all kinds of time on your makeup. Okay, I'm gonna powder now, and you can see even with a little bit of that um, Chanel under there, you still get a glow, even though I put foundation on. So if you like that, if you want a glow that's not like an oily kind of glow, that's a nice one, really nice. I'm gonna go in powder, and I don't know why this is still so difficult to get a hold of, but I was reminded of this because my foundations are tending to look a little bit lighter for me because I'm out in the sun or being exposed to some level of sunlight. Uh, I need to bring the color back a little bit. So this Gucci powder is really beautiful. It's still very glowy. You'll see when I put it on, you'll still, you'll still see a glow on my face, but it's not sparkly or anything like that. There's no individual particles plus it does have some color to it, so it will bring the foundation back to more of my skin tone. I do like to powder, powder my eyebrows because it'll make the eyebrow product a little bit easier in terms of application. 
something for it to kind of stick to. I'm gonna take this Chantecaille Camouflage Stilo and use it the way I typically use the La Prairie Concealer. And I'm just going to add it to the most recessed areas here. It, I, don't, I don't really need it. I just really like the way it looks. So just like this. So if you're looking for an alternative to something like the La Prairie, because I know that price point is quite high, this is a nice one. It has a little bit more of a sheen to it though, in terms of um, like the actual texture of it. it looks very skin-like, but that's one thing I noticed as well as this is a little bit more fluid than that one, but it does the job. I don't set this and it has virtually no creasing. The other combo I use, the Sizzly and La Prairie, is a very perfected kind of finish, but this is a really nice alternative. If you have this, you might try it. Also, one thing I've loved doing with this is priming my eyes with it. So it does do a nice job of just evening out the skin tone on my eyelids. And it serves as a nice primer. It's not sticky, so I like that. It's not heavy at all and seems to work with various eyeshadows, so that's good. Now I do still go in with the Clay de Peau in the corner of my eyes because that one does the best job of really concealing in terms of staying put and also the opacity of it to cancel out these corners here on the end. Now we're going to go in with my favorite eyebrow product. It's the one I picked up from Chanel. It's the waterproof um, eyebrow, it's like a sword. So it's this shape if you haven't seen it. And I like it because it's a very fast application. It's kind of been about fast application this month. So between the Merit um, complexion stick and this, and then I actually don't use brow gel with this, but I, I will today just to show you a different product. Um, but this is nice. Again, every day, just quickly fill in the brows. And then I just brush like this. And down. So what I've been doing is going in the direction that my brows want to go in and that helps with the brow gel situation because then I don't need brow gel because they're doing what they naturally do. So up, down, and across. And that's it. And again using this spoolie to break up the pigment so it looks more like hair, less like a stripe of eyebrow color. <laughs> So that's it. Now we can go in with the Mirror Beauty. I just wanted to show you this, kind of give you a little update on this product. The um, Brow Gel by Merit Beauty, I have mine in brown. It does remind me a lot of the Dior Pump and Brow. So if you're looking for a clean alternative, they are pretty comparable. So I'll show you, I'll just lightly go in. This doesn't work for me to push this in, I mean, it did in the demo because I took a lot of time to do it, but I don't usually take that much time. So I would only do that if I forgot a pencil or couldn't find one or some other reason, but this is normally how I would use it. But when I want it perfected, I will use a brow gel. I do want to update you on this Merit. I'm going to put it on now because my lips are dry, um, but I'm going to put another, put another lipstick on. I feel really like I've been sinking here. Okay. Um, I'm gonna put this on now just because it needs some hydration. Um, but this is Marrakesh, one of the standout products from Merit, so it's been a favorite. But yeah, you can really see the glow from that water fresh tint underneath the foundation because it's set, like everything is set. So if you want that, like it's almost like a glass skin kind of effect. I kind of went back and forth because I have so many lovely eye products this month, but this has been Really, I'm just so pleased with the way this turns out every time. This is a Chanel 226 Tissé Rivoli, and I think every time I've worn it this month, I've gotten questions. It's just such a pretty one, so let's do this again. <laughs> We're gonna go in with this shade, though, all over the lid. It's the second deepest shade. We'll fill in later with this, but I just wanna put that on the lid. Great one and done's all of these shades in here. This is the easiest palette to work with and I think it will look good on pretty much anybody. Beautiful sheen on this. More like a satin, less of a shimmer. I like taking actually a smaller brush for my crease now, so we're gonna go in with this color here. The second, no, the third deepest one, two, third deepest one. 
I'm just gonna go in the crease really gently, barely, barely touching my eyes. Um, and I do cheat it out a little bit higher than my actual crease. So you can see that there, let's blend it. So I love this one because you can build it up or you can go really kind of subtle with it. Lots of options with this. And then we're going to take this deepest shade, this one right here. I'm gonna take that same brush and just add it to the outer corner. Blend a little. You can see there's nothing patchy about these. That's why I love this so much, especially with this deeper color, sometimes the intensify colors or the deepest shades are kind of difficult to work with. This one, really easy. You know what, let's do this too. I'm gonna put number 40. This is one of a, a, one, a, one of my favorites in the waterline. It's that nice brown shade, even though brown doesn't look like it necessarily goes with this. I think it works really well. It's got a bit of shimmer. This one right here, we're gonna go underneath. I'm just gonna take a little bit of this deepest shade and go in the corner right here. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten in with Blackwood and then use this Merit Beauty Mascara we'll talk about. Okay, so I did add a little bit, just like a little bit of purple chalk, the eyeliner right above the upper lash line, just maybe if I close my eyes, just halfway. So I don't line all the way to this end. Usually I'll start right here and go to this end simply because I don't have so much lid space. So that way I get a little bit of a lift. And plus if I add eyeliner all the way, it gives a different shape to my eyes. It's a much more like rounded shape. So I do like to start here so you get a little bit of an uplifted shape. Very subtle though. Okay, so we're going to go in with blush and I picked up, thanks to Allison Chase, she recommended this one pink explosion, which is so pretty, but it is a little bit, a lot, <laughs> I think. I think it worked for that look because the lip was so subdued. In this case, I'm gonna layer it with another blush. So I'm going to go in with 68 first, Rose Ecri. I don't know if that's right. So we're gonna go with that first. I know you like me to call out the names of them as well, so I try my best. So going, starting here and then going this direction. So that's my blush placement in general. Now we're going to go in with Pink Explosion just right here. So when I add a pop of color, I add it right under the end of my eye here and right below on the highest point. So here to the highest point, right here. Okay, so you can see that it's a pop of color, but it doesn't take up the whole cheek. So if you ever wanna add something more dramatic, but you don't wanna take up the whole cheek space, then you can do something like that. Layering blushes is one of my favorite things to do. Okay, we're going to go in with this beautiful highlighter, and I love this in the inner corner, inner corner. <laughs> I also love using this on the eyelid, but today I'm gonna keep that um, eyeshadow the way it is, but I'm just gonna connect it a little bit with this. Nothing too bright about this one, just a glow. Okay, I'm gonna remove this lip and add, this is really is a stunning one, a number 192, Profond, Profondieu, Profondieu, maybe. This is such a lovely formula as well, nice and hydrating. You get a really uh, opaque color here. So I just intensified the eyes just a little bit more because I looked at the playback and it looked really light. I didn't realize I went in that light handedly, but you can go ahead and intensify. I just used the same shades and just went in a little bit more. Um, but let's go ahead and I forgot a couple of things. So let's take this highlighter on the cheeks here. Just the high points. You can see the glow. I think it's the best way to describe this as a glow. Let's go ahead with the eyeshadow and then take this lightest color right here. I'm just gonna pat that on the lids. And I'm going about, oh, two thirds of the way, just like that. I think it brightens it just a little bit. 
Not too much though, nothing sparkly in here. So we're adding the Chantecaille Vetiver Cedre. But that is it for today's video, so please take care of each other, stay well. If you enjoyed this video, if you learned something, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you next time.